more than 4,000 kilometers from Kyiv, the country that actually missed two world wars, the ocean breeze and enormous quantity of sunny days. This is Portugal, a lovely country in the western edge of Europe, the country that became a great supporter of Ukraine in that part of the earth. They ran away taking kids and the most precious, mostly just documents and some clothes. In stress, they ran away as far as they could. Thousands of Ukrainian women, children and seniors this way appeared in Portugal. The Portuguese people are very sympathetic in this situation. Some people just come here regularly and ask, what else can we do to help? They don't just bring something, they return afterwards and ask for a list of what else is needed. Today it is very important. The Portuguese are very involved in all the processes, helping, buying, bringing, offering. It tells a lot about people of Portugal. Same as Poland, Portugal knows a lot about Ukrainians thanks to the immigration processes since the early 90s. Several waves of expats showed that they share common values, the cultures are close, and the experience of 30 years showed that Ukrainians may easily integrate in the local society. But today there is one big difference – they are not immigrants. They are refugees running away from war, to come back home when the war is over. I'm personally a volunteer in the Emergency Refugee Center, but I'm actually a teacher, and I thought to myself, how can I help? How else can I help? So I decided, as a teacher, I can educate. I speak Portuguese and a little Ukrainian. So I said, let's help this way. Right now we have a team of 20 teachers who united here. Nobody was planning that, neither Ukrainians with peaceful jobs and expectations, nor Portuguese with their own life and their own prosperity. But when it came to a simple decision between acting and staying apart, Portuguese people made their choice at the same moment, as well as Poland, Romania, Baltic countries, as well as Germany, France, Netherlands and many other countries often long before the official government declarations. After all the pictures that I saw, terrible, aren't they? We are all somebody's mothers, fathers, brothers and sisters. I was thinking, how can I help? I'm a nurse, I work at a central hospital, I can't come from Portugal to Ukraine now, so I started look out how can I help here. First I was bringing some essential goods and food, but soon I started staying with them for an hour, two, three. I managed to organize my professional and personal life and actually started working here. They are not the strongest economy in Europe, but they are people with really big hearts, from Poland to Portugal, Whole new routes appeared, volunteers created full logistics to bring people to safe places and provide them with everything they need. The readiness to help is so huge that the volunteers, supported by big Portuguese enterprises, managed to organize the train with humanitarian aid moving towards Ukraine. The most difficult, I don't know, but I guess the most difficult part is when you can't help more, when you feel the necessity to do more, but you can't, when you have a lot of things to do and you would like to do more, but you just can't, and also it's very difficult to see what's going on in Ukraine. Nobody knows how long this war will last, but the consequences are already worldwide. To demonstrate the disastrous result of Russian war against Ukraine, the President Volodymyr Zelensky gave the overall number of refugees. Because of warfare, more than 10 million Ukrainians were forced to leave their homes. Imagine, just imagine how many. It's like the whole of Portugal was forced to leave. I don't want to use the word refugees, we are trying to say settlers for these people. We hope that all of them might come back home when it's safe. But when will it happen and what might left of their homes? In modern history, Portugal doesn't have any invasions in neighboring countries, geopolitical manipulations or propaganda machine like Russians have. Portuguese people do not spend all their budget on weaponry. And for sure, they can love much better than hate and destroy. But there is still one very useful experience that Portugal may share with Moscow. When there was no return point for the army during the dictator era, 
they just locked him in his cabinet. From time to time they printed a newspaper for him where there were so-called reports that he liked. But to do that, one should have a heart, brain and a bit of sense of humor. Too much for Russians in Russia today.